Hey amazing EV fans, welcome back to EVpedia, the one place where electric dreams meet reality. Quick question for you right at the start, why do you think Slate decided not to use LFP batteries for their new electric truck? Sounds simple, right? Well, it's a lot deeper than you might think. If you already know the answer, smash that comment section right now, and let's see who's ahead of the game. And hey, before we dive in, if you haven't subscribed yet, you're seriously missing out on all the electrifying action. Hit that subscribe button right now, punch that like button as hard as a launch mode takeoff, and let's set a wild goal, 1,000 likes and 100 comments in the next 24 hours. Can we pull it off? I believe in our incredible EVpedia family. Your support keeps this channel buzzing, and you're a huge part of this journey. Now, let's get into the high-voltage heart of today's story. Slate just shook the EV world when they unveiled their brand new electric pickup truck, a no-nonsense, tough-as-nails utility machine that's set to cost under $20,000 after factoring in that juicy $7,500 federal tax credit. Sounds too good to be true, right? Especially when you consider that for years, affordable EVs have been a bit like unicorns, everyone talks about them, but no one ever really sees one. You'd naturally assume that to keep costs low, Slate would turn to lithium iron phosphate LFP batteries, which are known worldwide for being affordable and tough. But guess what? Nope. Slate is steering the other way, choosing the pricier, more conventional nickel manganese cobalt NMC batteries instead. Wait, what? Why would they do that? Chris Barman, Slate's fearless CEO, revealed to Inside EVs that it all boils down to one key reason, qualifying for the all-important $7,500 EV federal rebate. Turns out, sticking with mainstream NMC chemistry made it a lot easier to meet the strict sourcing requirements baked into today's EV tax credit laws. She pointed out that while LFP might be cheaper, much of its supply chain is still heavily reliant on China, a huge red flag under U.S. tax credit rules. We've gone with more of what's in the mainstream right now, Barman said, adding that most of their battery materials would now come from U.S. scaled sources. And it's not just a smart move, it's a necessary one. Thanks to new regulations, EVs must be assembled in North America and use battery materials that aren't linked to foreign adversaries like China to qualify for rebates. It's part of a broader government push to supercharge U.S. manufacturing and lessen our dependence on China's iron grip over the global battery market, especially since China currently controls around 98% of active materials for LFP batteries. That's right, 98%. Imagine being that dominant, and the rules only get stricter. By 2027, at least 80% of an EV's critical minerals must come from the U.S. or countries with a free trade agreement. By 2029, 100% of battery components must be made in North America. It's a steep climb, but here's the twist. Slate, being a fresh new player, actually has the advantage of building their supply chains from scratch, tailored to today's standards, while older EV makers are scrambling to retrofit their operations and sometimes losing rebate eligibility altogether. But here's the kicker. Even the best plans aren't bulletproof. There's real political risk. If the EV tax credit disappears under a potential future administration, like if President Trump returns to office, Slate could face new challenges. Still, they're pushing ahead, securing U.S.-made NMC cells from South Korean supplier SK On. They've locked in a deal for 20 gigawatt hours of battery cells through 2031. To put that in perspective, that's enough for roughly 380,000 trucks using their 52.7 kilowatt hour battery packs. And if you want more range, no problem. Slate's also planning an 84.3 kilowatt hour option for those longer hauls. Now let's talk about the heart of the matter, why energy density matters. While LFP batteries are loved for their resilience, lower cost, and rapid charging capabilities, they just can't match NMC batteries when it comes to squeezing more energy into less space. Slate's engineering head, Eric Keeper, shared that while the base truck with a 150-mile range could have been doable with LFP, it would have been near impossible to stretch that range to 240 miles with LFP tech. Given the Slate truck's compact size, every inch of battery space counts. So from every angle, tax credit compliance, supply chain readiness, and technical performance, NMC batteries made more sense for Slate. It's a strategic move that might just be the secret sauce to making affordable electric trucks a mainstream reality. Before we hit the outro, here's a quick thought from us at EVpedia. Honestly, we think Slate made the right call. Building for the future means playing by the rules today, and their smart moves on battery sourcing and energy density show real vision. But what about you? 
do you agree with Slate's decision to skip LFP batteries? Would you have preferred the rugged reliability of LFP, even if it meant a little less range? Tell us in the comments, we're dying to know your take. And hey, if you found today's breakdown even a little bit insightful, share this video with your fellow EV lovers and get the conversation rolling. Now, remember the question we asked at the beginning? Why did Slate avoid using LFP batteries? If you answered anything along the lines of supply chain rules and tax credit eligibility, ding, 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 you nailed it. Great job, and thanks for playing along. Before you go, don't forget, smash that like button, slam that subscribe button, and let's crush our goal of 1,000 likes and 100 comments in 24 hours. Your support is what keeps EVpedia driving forward, and trust me, we've got even bigger stories on the horizon. Stay charged, stay curious, and we'll catch you in the next video. Until then, this is EVpedia, signing off but never slowing down.